when you think about an agent, a lot of times we start out, we're, sell, we're focused on prospecting, right? And selling. Then we want to eventually move into building. And not everybody wants to really sell forever if they can help it, you know? Help someone see the bigger picture, you know? Like there's a bigger world out there. There's a bigger income. There's a bigger help for them. But maybe they don't see it yet because they're like, they're again, they're stuck. But But they're like, you know, they're making five, six grand a month. And they're like, dude, nobody in my family's ever made five, six, seven grand a month. You know, this is amazing. Yeah. It's if you, if you've never made five, six, seven grand a month, I mean, that's like, you know, for lottery for some people. Right. But why stop there? Mm. Five or six thousand dollars a month for the next 10 or 15 or 20 years will not build you a legacy. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. Today, we've got a guest that is returning, and she's going to talk specifically today about the challenges that you're having when you're getting to the point of starting to build, and maybe some of the pitfalls she went through, and how you can learn from her today. Please welcome back. She was on Thanksgiving Day uh, a year ago. Please welcome back, Lori Stey. Hey, everybody. So happy to be here, Cody. I thank you so much, and Oh my gosh, it's been a year since last Thanksgiving. So yeah. much has happened, um, not just in in you know my part of the world, but you too. I mean, I can't even. I I still am reeling over eight uh, percent nation this year. I mean, ah. compared last year, compared to this year, but this year, just like yeah, it's we talk about it a lot. You know, I have some new agents, and I'm. I'm, I'm revving them up for next year. I love it. Well, thank you for doing that. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, and you got involved in the Ultimate Agent Tour that we had recently in Dallas as well. So thank you for doing that. I can tell you this. For, for those that have seen Lori a little bit from afar, but you haven't met her yet, um, she's driven. But she's also got a big heart. And she cares. And she shows up. And she is looking to help a lot of people, which I love. So thank you for doing that. For sure. Yeah. So on the uh, around Thanksgiving, I, I'm grateful for you. You know, there you oh, go. Absolutely. Back at you. Very yeah. grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've, we've talked a lot about like, you know, selling insurance and using, using automation, using technology, like different stuff along the way with our journey together. Um, I know today you want to talk about the challenges of starting to build, you know, and why people wait, why, maybe why they shouldn't wait, what, the stuff they go through, the mental challenges, the physical challenges. Um, you started to really build an organization. And it's awesome to see. And it's also a bigger than you, you know? Um, is that scary? No, uh, no, I, would, I don't know that it's, it's scary. What it is, okay. is for me, for me, it's, it's new. Mm. So, um, and that's kind of where it goes back to the, you know, we come into this business and I don't care, you know, who you're with, you know, whether it's Symmetry Financial Group or FFL, I mean, wherever you go, right? Yeah. The first thing that people tell you is build, right? Build, bring other people in, show them what you're doing. And uh, being self-employed 42 years and extremely independent, and I did not partner with people. Um, I was, as you said, driven, but I was always... Uh, I always did things based on if I wanted it done right, I needed to do it myself. Mm. I backed myself into a lot of holes like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, where's that thought process come from, if you think about it? Um, I think, you know, part of it was, you know, my upbringing. I mean, I didn't have okay. really, a, a really, I had parents, but I didn't have really present parents. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I had multiple brothers and sisters on both sides after they separated. Um, but I was older when they all came along. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of things that fed into that. And, you know, my parents are both perfectionists. It's in the DNA. What can I say? Yep. And, you know, there comes a point when, you know, perfectionist OCD, all these things that people throw out there, you know, as you grow, as you grow and as you get older, um, hopefully you turn those into, you know, benefits rather than, you know, having them hold you back. And they did. I mean, it, it, they've held me back and it held me back when I first started insurance in 2020 because I had that mindset because I felt like of all the businesses I'd started over the years and all the things that I had done, um, 
I wasn't, this was really the first partnership that I, that I made, you know, made a decision to create. And a lot of it had to do with you, Cody and, and, and coach and coach Bert, right? Because Nate invited me to his little mini SWAT. It's, it's not mini anymore. 8% nation isn't mini anymore. These things were in 2020. It's only 2022. Just the, 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 it's mind blowing to me the stuff Crazy. that has happened in my life, your life, Nate, all these people's lives. Um, Coach Bert, you know, Michael Bert, I'm like, you know, I just watching what people are doing out there is mind blowing to me. But it was it was a huge step for me to to step into faith and trust. Yes. That that um, somebody else could actually have my best interest at heart. Yeah. That was. Is- that wasn't a natural place for me. It was very uncomfortable. Mm. It was not a natural place to think that, and or to or to to assume that it would be true. I guess you know. Yeah. Do, and, do you do you think that feeling that you've had about do, do people really have my best interest at heart and trusting others as you went on this entrepreneurial journey for decades? Do you think that's kind of held you back a little bit? thinking that and potentially projecting it onto uh, the building and recruiting side, potentially? Uh, you know, maybe, um, probably. I mean, you know, I'll be, I'll be honest. I came into, uh, you know, th- this is a system oriented business. Yes. Whether it's, you know, Cody Askins agents, or it doesn't matter what organization you come into, there's a system in place. And there's a system in place because people who before us have have fallen down, failed, got back up, tried it again, figured it out, spent millions of dollars, whatever they've done to figure out what works, right? Right. I mean, Cody Cody didn't you know sell 131 thousand in his first year in life insurance, right? 113 thousand, anyway. <laughs> Seventeen, close enough. 117 thousand. I run there anyway. Um, you know, and and have a perfect system in place. You know, you've built what you have by failing, trying again, figuring it out. And so I came here and there was a system, but I had a mindset that I'd been successful on my own, but I was not anywhere near as successful as my potential was Mm -hmm. by becoming part of something bigger than myself. Yeah, that was the key. And I didn't do that right away because I I thought I had it all figured out. And I bucked the system for a while, you know, I was like, you know, that doesn't make sense to me. Why? You know, I mean, just those things. Right. Yes. So, so there was that part, but there was also a component that has just recently really kind of come to, to, to my attention. And you know, this Cody, I came here, I think everybody comes into, you know, a personal development type environment no matter how much they've done in their life, a little broken because we have no idea. And I don't mean broken in a bad way. We're just, you no. know, bankrupt maybe is a little better word. Yeah. We're missing some pieces, you know, there's some parts missing. And, um, and that was what I saw. That was mostly what attracted me. It's not, you know, I love, I love the concept of life insurance. I love helping people protect their money. I love what I do. But for me, I didn't know I was starving until I sat in that room and I listened to you and I listened to coach and I listened to Nate on that late January, 2020 pre COVID. I had no idea. I mean, there was what, maybe 40 people in that room. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There wasn't very, very many. No. And, um, something stirred in me that day, but it wasn't about what I could get so much as far as like the building, I kept hearing that, but what it was, was what I could do to fill myself up. And Mm. so I've spent the last two and a half years really on this like growth thing, this personal development thing. You know, it's, I've made it about me. I've, I've helped other people and I love helping people. And I would probably be a billionaire if I didn't love helping people so much. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's just right. But that's okay. I mean, that's, you know, I'm wealthy in a lot of other ways. So that's all good. But um, that personal development component. And so recently, um, now that I have really just made the decision that I need to dive in, it's not even about 
it's still helping. It's not even about building something anymore that is going to be, yeah, it's a financial, it's a, a, a legacy for myself. Sure. That's important. But what it has become is giving back to other people what yes. I found here. Yes. You know, it's not even, it's not even, yeah, I want that. I want success for them. I want success for me through them, but doing yep. it, it ha is, it, I'm doing it for a totally different reason. I'm doing it because I want to pay forward what I got here, what yes. I discovered when I sat in that room in, in the end of January, 2020 and met you and, and Nate and everybody. And my world blew up that day. That's awesome. You know, it was crazy. It was like, it's literally like I realized the pantry was empty and here I thought I was, I was, you know, I was pretty full, right? We just don't yeah. know what we don't know. And, you know, it's the concept of somebody just asked me the other day, relatively new agent. Why, why, why do we keep going to these same meetings and hearing the same thing over and over again? And, you know, cause I was talking about uh, SWAT and I was talking about 8% nation and, you know, just yeah. how much stuff can you possibly learn? And I was like, look, here's the thing. If you go to these things and you keep hearing the same thing over and over again, the same way, you're not working on yourself. Mm. <laughs> okay. Every single time. I mean, you have heard Nate probably say the same thing you know, some drop of wisdom 50 times. There's something out there you've heard him say 50 times. There's something yeah. out there I've heard you say 50 times, you know, gosh knows. I mean, I, I've <laughs> a lot of people, but every single time I hear something that I've already heard, it has a new component. It means something different. It impacts me differently because I'm in a different place. Correct. And that's the whole point, yeah. right? Get up every day, pour into yourself, because that day will present something brand new, even if you're standing in the same spot you've stood in every day for the 30 days, the 365 days or the 10 years before, yeah. it will still be a different view. Yep. How, and, does someone, how does someone start to get a different view if they don't have, if, if they feel like they're kind of stuck, you know? Well, I, I think half the I think half the battle is like realizing you're stuck. I didn't realize I was stuck. <laughs> yeah, that's tough too. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's I, I I I was bored at the time. I didn't really know what direction I was going. I just moved to Texas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say, be careful what you pray for and ask for because you might just get it. And for the couple months prior to that, I've been kind of sitting around going, what am I going to do? Uh, you know, God put something in my, my, my path. Well, yes. I had no idea. I mean, it, was it this prop? Yeah, probably. But it, but this was huge. So yeah, look, if you can stand, you know, if your life is spinning in the same spot, that's to me stuck. I didn't realize I was stuck. It was spinning in the same spot. It was in a different state, but it was still in the same spot. Um, the The best thing you can do, I mean, we have technology today. You know, open up, like right now, I opened up YouTube because you said Dylan, Dylan's awesome. Dylan put the, a little clip from last year up here. But the very first thing I do when I open my YouTube, the very first thing I see is motivational speech, Eric Thomas, Cody Askins, Coach Michael Burt. Those are the things that I have saved. If you're stuck, just open up YouTube and listen to something other than a song. Mm. I mean, you know, start somewhere. Yes. Pick a book, read a page. That's Somebody big. Takes a page, you know, because... You know, Nate has a great analogy about, you know, uh, he, I don't remember who it was, but he was talking to somebody about exercising, right? And he said, look, I'm not asking you to run a mile. Go walk one block mm -hmm. for a week. Then <laughs> walk two blocks for a week, but do it every day. You have to do it every day, right? Yes. Do one push-up, but do it yes. every day, right? So... That was a big thing for me was, you know, I, I'm big on commitment. I'm big on my word. I'm big on, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I was missing the component of making those commitments to myself. My word was good with everybody else, but it was terrible with myself. We're mm. the 
See, our own, our, our self is the easiest person to lie to. It's also the easiest person to break a promise to. I mean, True. people don't think about that. I mean, where, you oh. know, you're, you would never go out, and break a promise to Lauren. Right. She'd kill but me. You'd sit in your office and go, yeah, yeah. I promised myself I'd do that. But you know, today might be not, not a good day. Who's going to know? But the most important person knows. I mean, that's really what, what has come of this. So back to building, it's now about giving away what it is that I got. Mm. It's, about, it's about sharing that concept with people. And it's also about um, patience. Yes. I don't recommend not building in the beginning because I didn't realize that I didn't have to have the patience that I could push those people to Gus and to Nate and to Cody and to Coach Michael Burt and let them do it for me. I didn't quite grasp that because I wasn't good at having people do stuff for me. Right. That's so big. That, was, that was that was on me. So if you're out there listening, I'm not saying go go fill yourself up before you build. I'm saying go fill yourself up with the build. <laughs> yeah, yep. you know, use the people that already have what it is that you're where you're going and what you want, right? I didn't get that, Good. but for whatever reason, I'm here now, and yeah, so I guess it is a little scary, but what it is that I have now that I didn't have two years ago is patience. I trust myself to be a leader. Um. I can tell people, I can guide people how to do what it is that they need to do to be successful instead of doing it for them. Yep. It's huge. <laughs> you know how easy it is to do something for somebody because it's easier than explaining to them seven yeah. times. You asked me that question yesterday. Yeah. I know, but I'm like, okay. Right. I say it again. Yes. Me, uh, two years ago, I would have been screw it. I'll just do it myself. I'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah. And our personalities want to do that along the yeah. way too, you know? Um, here's one question I was thinking about um, before we wrap up. What, 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 um, when you think about an agent, um, a lot of times we start out, we're, sell, we're focused on prospecting, right? And selling. Then we want to eventually move into building. Not everybody wants to really sell forever if they can help it, you know? Um, Help someone see the bigger picture, you know, coach always says you can't see the picture when it's inside the frame, you know, like there's a bigger world out there. There's a bigger income. There's a bigger help for them, but maybe they don't see it yet. Cause they're like, they're again, they're stuck, but, but they're like, you know, they're making five, six grand a month. And they're like, dude, nobody in my family's ever made five, six, seven grand a month. You know, this is amazing, but they're not seeing past that. Help them see past that real quick before we wrap up today. Oh, well, you know, I mean, yeah, it's if, you, if you've never made five, six, seven, seven grand a month, I mean, that's like, you know, for lottery for some people, right? Yeah. But why stop there? Mm. Okay. Because one of the things that, that I've learned is from, well, from all of you, I mean, Nate says it all the time though, when you're, when you're pushing forward into something, you're learning something new, especially in this industry, you come in, you make that five, six grand. If you stop, you will quit. Yeah, you will. This industry does not have a settled point. <laughs> This organization, SWAT, Nate, Cody Askins of the world do not have a settle point. There's not, you don't come in and make your five grand a month and go, okay, I'll do the same thing for the next 10 years. It, it, you'll, you won't, you won't make it. That's right. Because it is, it is a growth driven industry, not just on in your bank account, but in your personal life and your relationships and what you do. But here's the other thing, you guys. Five or six thousand dollars a month for the next ten or fifteen or twenty years will not build you a legacy. No. It'll keep you alive. You'll yep. sustain. You'll eat. You'll pay the rent. But what? But really, what this is about is the legacy. What do you want people to say about you when you're gone? 
And I don't mean money. I mean, money's great too. Leave a financial legacy. Yes. But what do you want people to say about you when you're gone? And what I want people to say is that I went out there and I spent my time in my life helping as many people as I could. And if I'm helping as many people as I could, uh, can on a daily basis, whether it's a new agent or a client or whatever, then I better be growing that five to 6,000. Otherwise, I'm not doing as much as I can. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, phenomenal feedback. Amazing as always. If they want to learn more from you, how can they get in touch with Lori Stye? Well, they can, they can, uh, I'll tell you guys, I'm going to tell you one story about that. Okay. Somebody saw one of our podcasts and she's now an agent and she called me and I answered the phone and she said, <laughs> Oh my God, you answered the phone. <laughs> I didn't expect you to answer the phone. And I thought, I just thought that was amazing because that's awesome. it made me feel really good. But that's cool. So, so guys, my number is 425 577 3050. I do answer the phone myself. I actually answer my phone. Um, if I don't answer the phone, it's because I'm helping a client, but I'm going to text you and say that's what I'm doing and I'll call you right back. Yeah. But again, 425 577 3050. You can go to Velocity Wealth uh, Protection on Facebook and message me there. And you can get me at Lori at VelocityWealthPro.com. I love it. Lori, you're awesome. Thank you for being on the podcast today. Thank you for being a part of this. Oh, I am so very grateful. Thank you, Cody. And you know what? Out there to everybody, um, you know, happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. And don't make this the only day of the year that you give thanks for what you have, where you're going, and the people that appreciate you. I love it. Amazing final touch. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for listening and have an amazing holiday season. And we'll see you on the next interview. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Hey, I'm back with another interview, man. Special guest today, a tech wizard today. Okay. My buddy, Mr. Corey Bell from Lead to Client CRM. What's up, Corey? How you doing, Cody? I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, man, I'm doing awesome, brother. Appreciate you asking. Um, so I would love for them because you guys.